So remember how I said I would never get behind the Nerve Rage episodes again in order to edit for greatest hit shows? Yeah. I did. <laughs> I 100% well, did. I was but, so but, surprised. Yeah. But the quarantine. Yeah, yeah. So You were too busy making dioramas. True. To see, that's what it is. So I'm working through them now. I'm like at, I think I'm like 10, 10 more episodes to go. Um, but yeah, good grief. Uh, what a nightmare. And I, I do it every time. You, you, which, yeah, it's just like anything else. You let one week go, and then one yeah, week. Because you were on it. Yeah. I remember you were on it. Yeah, I keep a running list of it all. Like, But you let one, one week becomes two, two becomes three, three becomes six, six becomes 12. And then before you know it, you got fucking 20 some episodes to do. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Oh, boy. Welcome, everybody. Uh, back to Nerd Rage. Unfortunately. We do have one little bummer to get out. Well, big bummer, but <laughs> I was just saying little. But you know, to get out of the way. Um, uh, so we lost a, a member of our of our friends, of our crew, of of a, fr- a friend of the community, really, if you will. Uh, New York Mike, uh, he passed away. I, th- I, th- I think in the middle of the night. Um, and you know, we've all been kind of dealing with that. Uh, it's compounded. <laughs> My situation, I think specifically, like I, I actually, uh, I cracked uh, the other night. I uh, cracked. I lost it a bit, and then got myself back together. And uh, you know, he's. I've been working behind the scenes with Lowry and uh, of uh, the Nerds of Spoken podcast, and Robert D uh, of Four Dummies and Shattercast, trying to kind of uh, play all the logistics and how to handle um, everything from you know, raising money to help his son and also uh, handling the collection, which is like, you know, it's something that we talk about all the time. Yeah, theoretically talk about. Yep, like, but I, you know, like, this is the real. this is the first time that we've really had to do it in our circle, I think. And uh, I can yeah. tell you it's a fucking, it's going to be a, it's going to be a nightmare. So, so Bobby, I was privy to, I guess, some new information to me. I found out yesterday about that whole situation. And I will I will just be completely honest with you. Mm-hmm. That scares the shit out of me for what I'm gonna do to my family. Yeah, I mean you the, don't have a lot of shit though, right? You're like you're fluid. It's not like you're I, I, understandably yeah. so. But and and you know, speaking in broad strokes, I'm lucky because my wife's f- from a thousand feet, but plugged into what's going on. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Mason even you know would know what to do, and and obviously you know you guys. Yes. Um, you know, would, would would know what's going on, but I don't know, man. It's really just like part of me is like, what the fuck am I doing to my family right now? And, and I don't know. It's just that it's I'm in an odd headspace about it all. I mean, it's I found out I I, I missed a call at like eleven o'clock from from Eric Burgess. I was like, what? Why? Why is uh, I sent him a text. I'm like, hey, it was, it was early. I was like, hey, I missed your call. I was already in bed. And he, t- he texted me and told me. I was like, oh, Jesus. And I was in, uh, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah. I woke, I woke Kelly up to tell her, and I was like, you know, we passed. And uh, all she'll say is, you know, you can't say this about many people, but the picture of him in my head is him with that giant smile. Yeah, yeah for sure. Man. God. For man. sure. Good guy. He um, I, my phone started blowing up as well. Uh, eleven around eleven that evening, and it it was started blowing up in a way that I'm familiar with, so I didn't look at it. I was, like when I felt like phone calls along with texts and all that shit coming through like simultaneously, I was like, nope. I flipped my phone over and I went to bed and I got back to it in the morning. Um, I could I couldn't handle it at that moment in time. Uh. But, you know, uh, in regard to the collecting, I've been thinking a lot about it as well. Uh, I do think that I am going to begin an inventory, uh, like an official document, so that she knows exactly what I have. Um, it's, it's, t- it's a tough space to be in. So, obviously, it's easily understanding, uh, understandable that you don't want to burden your family with all this shit. Uh However, yeah, it, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just so gonna I, say. I, however, <laughs> when when we flip this shit, you know, because I'm working with her in scheduling, and Mike has a substantial collection across 
genres. He's not just a transformer guy. He's a collector. And uh, I'm work. I'm going to be working with her in about two weeks, uh, maybe three, because of quarantine, which is another thing that's just interesting. Like you know, just sociologically, like you got to you've got to push back funerals because people are coming from out of town and have to be quarantined. Yeah. So it could be, correct. It could be three weeks. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. That's so, so, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to be getting with her and lining up kind of and scheduling with many people who have reached out to me and been like, I'm, I'm down to go over there and sort through this shit. So that's awesome. And trying to schedule all that. Uh, but I mean, like, you know, aside from, I think like the, uh, the, their son Jaden is doing stuff. Uh, their school, his school, is doing stuff, and uh, some of their friends and family are doing stuff as well. And then we have been doing stuff, and along with all of those components, with his collection, like it's going to, it's going to be work, and it's probably going to be years of work, uh, un- unfortunately. But uh, just due to the dynamics of her circumstance specifically, uh, but you know, it's going to be. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a safety net in place for a guy that didn't have a whole ton of, you know, a lot of guys in our age bracket aren't thinking about life insurance and all that kind of shit quite yet. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll stop you right there. For $27 a month, I'm worth more dead than alive, people. Get fucking life insurance. I agree. I agree. $27 Um, a month, my family will be taken care of for the rest of their lives if I walk outside and the tree falls on me. Right. <laughs> and you do have some trees out there. You can just not have any family like me. Well, you got a family. <laughs> you do have a family. Who? Krista. What? You have Krista. You have I, your parents. I, she, don't, she don't need me. She can take care of herself. Shit. I don't think so. <laughs> with my parents. I don't think she can. She has, what do you mean? She has better benefits than I do. She has what? She has better benefits and shit than I do. Correct. But that doesn't pay the mortgage, does it? Mm, mm, mm. You know, like there's shit gets complicated, man, you know, like and, and it's, it's become painfully aware. I think like uh, like you said, Joe, when it moves out of theory, you know what I mean? And into yeah. reality in the practice. Yeah. Um, So it's 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 been eye opening and it, it, it raises the conversation right of like what is how do you weigh this? And I'm asking you guys, like, how do you weigh um some things that bring you happiness now that will be and they're not even a detriment but they're a pain in the ass for your family after like i mean well I don't know. You, you cannot live life especially for someone i i i mean i don't didn't know mike well i've i've not never had anything but good interactions with him the few times i did um, I'm, I'm assuming that some, with someone with that extensive of a collection, that is a big part of their life, you know? Yep. Like, you, I, I would never expect someone to remotely give that up. You know, and I don't think it's necessarily... Think, yeah, because it's part of who you are and part of your life. To, like, give that up is to give yourself up. Right. I don't think it's necessarily just our hobby. I mean, I, I, and I've had this, I had this conversation with my dad every time I've seen him since I've moved. Mm-hmm. He probably has... He might have a hundred thousand dollars worth of tools, high end metal shaping, like f- wow. French made equipment in his shop. That and that's just me ballpark guessing, right? Because I know he has accumulated that over the past twenty years when he really got into metal shaping. And Lord, my mom probably has no idea what kind of money's in that shop. But right. I've said, you know, walk through the shop and point at stuff and say how much it's worth and video it, mm-hmm. or put a post it note on stuff. Or, or, and he's like, call so and so. I'm like. What if someone's else's dad? Because he's older than you, right? You know, <laughs> but just you know, I did. My parents had a very like poignant, pay attention conversation with me and Kelly about, you know, where everything is at the house and who you know how to handle the will and what. And it was just like, <sighs> kind of takes you back, man. I mean, I know yeah. I'm kind of shifting gears a little here, but it's same same pocket. But you know, the, the mortality, I guess, would be the the word of the week. Yeah. And and our place in the world and all that. Because I think, like, you know, even knowing, you know, I don't know. I don't know if if Mike would have changed anything. 
you know? And I think that all of us have been have been running that through our heads. I, I mean, it sounds like you have, Chris. I know I have been. Um, but I, th- I, like, and I'm not trying to be, like, corny or cheesy, but, like, I literally don't think it's what he would have wanted. You know, not that we are doing it for him, but, you know, like, I think that if, if, you, could, if you could talk to his spirit and be like, dude, you know, like, uh, we're all going to sell our, <laughs> we're all going to sell our shit now because we're fucking terrified after what happened to you. Like, I think, that would bum him out. You're on, you're on, you know, Google, Google docs is free to build a spreadsheet. So, right. Um, and you're, you're probably right. I think maybe we should sponsor, um, it's inventory week. At, <laughs> it's a cool table. Mm-hmm. Uh, time to pull out the Google docs and update. Let your family know, uh, how much, uh, you've bled them dry. And, and much like Bobby's not falling behind on the, uh, Narrate best stuff. If every time you got something, you just add it to the sheet, it'll be pretty easy. You know, every, <laughs> every every year for the past three years, I've said to myself in January, let's keep a spreadsheet this year. Yep. Everything we buy. <laughs> yep. Same you, here. I, I've got as many spreadsheets built. Yeah, that's Same here. not happened. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's going to be a a rough ride for a while. If uh, if in regards to to handling his collection, but that is also very specific to the circumstances that he has left behind. Um, right. And if there's anybody in the uh, the New York or uh, Jersey or anywhere surrounding area and want to contribute um, physically, want to contribute, want to go and help inventory and all of that shit. Um, first of all. I love you. And secondly, uh, please get in contact with me and I am building a network of people so that I can organize with her days to go by inventory, the shit catalog it, and then try to sell it. And, and, and honestly not try to sell it all at once, try to sell it kind of piece by piece almost because she's not going to be able to handle all of the shipping, you know? I mean, yeah. And like, just, I don't, uh, everything is what I, on in like, Billies or something, or or just everything in display cases. I don't exactly know. Like he has a ton of stuff that's not even opened. Yeah, I was gonna say it would help just to like fucking inventory and box everything to make exactly. sure exactly and, so, and mark complete. Like so, all the all pieces are there. So that's gonna be stage one when we get there. Is inventory cataloging, boxing it up, make sure it's complete, and take pictures. You know, uh, I, we we cards on the table the round group kind of we had, had somewhat of a conversation about some of these logistics yesterday and i would just i know i know you're not going to get top dollar for it but i would probably just try to get somebody to buy it all a yeah. toy store or something yeah, yeah. i don't know there's a lot of stuff and like and ranging in genre that's that'll be tough yeah i'm just not sure if, i'm not even sure there's a store that that could get or, it or i don't yeah an individual that of course the con if the con season ever comes back Right. Well, uh, what I think I don't know. Just the, the, the logistics around well, that I, is for sure. overwhelming for her, much less if for anybody sure. else. For sure. And 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 my goal with that is to kind of look at what's catalog and inventory, get rid of the the big dollar stuff, and then you know start etch, like chipping away at the other stuff, and then it gets to a point where it's like, okay, put this shit in a bin. We're taking the bin to NJCC. Yeah. You know. Um, and then also finding out like what his son wants and, you know, like there's other things involved also, you know, How old and, is this kid? uh, it's between he's, seven and nine. He's nine. There you go. Thanks. Um, so, you know, like there's just, there's just a number of factors at play. I will tell you, uh, like I, I just found out and I, I don't want to talk about it too much on air, but I like, I just, I got a mystery package not too long ago and, it's been kind of driving me nuts. Like it was like a little thing in there that I'd mentioned one time and uh, like that. I was like, man, like this is one of those things. It's like a little, you know, it's not an expensive thing, but it's like one of those things that I kind of always wanted. But like every time I'm in the place to buy it, I don't know if you guys have these things where it's like, it's a $20 thing or some shit, you know, this one's a bit more than that, but if it's a $20 thing and like, you're like, man, I really want that. I really want that. But every time you're around it, you're like, man, I don't want to spend $20 on that shit. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, but you'll, but you'll spend 25 on lunch without exactly, adding that. Exactly. Exactly. I'm the same way, and I, I don't understand why. I really don't. So I, I mentioned it, like, on a – I don't know whether it was on a Dummies or on a, on a Sit Down Saturday or on a pod. or like, I don't know where I mentioned it, but I just mentioned it recently, and one popped up at my door. 
and I didn't know the name. So I was trying to like hunt down. I went through like all my messages everywhere, searching the name to try to find it. I was like, man, I don't fucking know. I mean, how would this dude have my address? You know what I mean? Like, um, and uh, anyway, Troy, uh, Swingers Troy. No, he's not a real swinger, but the guy that we call the Swinger Troy. He uh, he hit me. I had to call him and tell him. And then uh, like a couple of days went by, and he hit me up, and he was like, "Hey, Mike, and I got that for you." And it's just like, God, damn it. <laughs> You know, like I didn't even get the opportunity to say thank you to the dude. I didn't get the opportunity to have one last skull fest with the dude. I did, you know, it's like that is another thing that's coming to light in all this in spite of, uh, you know, what do you do, you know, when you die and handling the collection and all that stuff, which is very important. It's just, you know, not taking shit for granted. Um, time is precious and we're, we're losing a lot of it this year. Like, yeah, I mean, we basically lost half a year. I can't believe it's July. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like we've lived any this of this year, and it's uh, the idea, the prospect of 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 you know m- missing the opportunity to spend time with people. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got to thinking about it. So we would have seen him at. Let's see, I guess ZoloCon was. I'm glad I went to ZoloCon because last time. We saw him, um, ZoloCon, and then we didn't get NJCC, we didn't get ToyCon, we didn't get SkullFest, you know? Yep. It's, it's, it's the thing, man, You people say it, you know? Time is the most valuable property in the world. Yep. And it's time with people, it's time that goes by. I mean, this year, I went to Toy Fair 2020, but it feels like I went to Toy Fair 1862. <laughs> because... <laughs> It, the time has passed. I mean, yeah. I literally think I've aged that much since we've been in this situation. Yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's just heartbreaking. Yeah, and um, so I mean, and, I'm, go ahead. No, I wasn't. And like, I don't, I don't know when it's gonna get better. Didn't Texas just like roll back back in opening shit? Yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the states it seems that that opened up for Memorial Day. Or that didn't clamp down uh, as yeah. as hard as the rest of the country. Um, seems like they are starting to go through it now. Uh, yeah, Maryland, on the other hand, had six deaths yesterday. Jesus. I mean, I know that sounds fucked up, but I mean, when you were having fucking but it's seventy, not exa- yeah, yeah it was seventy, eighty, yeah. you know, like six, yeah. six sounds pretty good. You know, like six, 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 six is good. You know, like, and we're we're like partially open, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so there's that, that, there's that is pretty good. There's a little bit of normalcy, um, which is nice. Except for the traffic, which is not. Yeah, nice. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. But you know what? Like, I'm gonna take shit like that. Like, you know, like there is like a, a leveling to that playing field, right? Like, I'm gonna try to view that shit different, man. Like, I, I really am. I've been making a conscious effort to, like, when I see. Mm-hmm. Traffic in the morning. I'm like, man, look at all these people going to work. Good, <laughs> good. You, I mean, you're a positive dude anyway. I try to be. I try to be. <laughs> I tell you, it's been rough. It's been rough, and I'm running out of battery. Um, yeah. Because you haven't seen any people. People recharge you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so look, uh, we can move move on at least for, in terms of the the podcast from this. But you know, Mike, we love you. We miss you. And, you know, hopefully see you one day. And with that, let's talk about my dick a little bit. Um, What's wrong with this so, fucking week? So let me tell you. I, I did. I did I'm, it's not this week. It was, it was like a couple months ago. But uh, By the way, yeah. by the way, listener feedback. My wife listens to this show about your dick. Just saying. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there's, been, there's been conversations. So It's been... A couple months ago, I gotta see if it's a. Uh, I want to see if it's a, a, a COVID side effect. Maybe I had the COVID, COVID, COVID cock. My is that was, a thing? I don't know. Um, it was like dehydrated. <laughs> was it throwing up? <laughs> like, like no, no. I, I mean, not not any more than than usual. Like that was like not a side effect necessarily, but like it was like the skin was dry. Yeah, but you don't fucking ever use moisturizing anything. I bet your soap is like extra drying soap. Yeah, you probably for, used fucking witch hazel for, to wash it. I, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god! 
<laughs> I use the Irish. Hang on, well, hang on, hang on, Bobby. I'm gonna let you finish in all yeah, that jazz, please. That's my new one, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish in all that jazz. Well, you work. Never mind. You work in a pharmacy, so you know which hazel is. Most people, like I don't think, I don't think nine out of ten people in the street could say yes. I, I know what which hazel is. <laughs> well, I work in a pharmacy, and also like I, 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 into makeup, so like. I, I guess so. Yeah. I end up knowing a lot of beauty products. That's that's just like a deep pull right there, you know. <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know, uh, why? You know what which is? Uh, well, yeah, I'm from Alabama, so. <laughs> what? Where would you come from? <laughs> <laughs> but but it was like it was like it was like irritated. Like it was like it was like dried skin. Like it was like the skin was dry on it. Like it, yeah, you're right. It felt like I, and I, that's what I put. Uh, what are they like uh, shea butter? I think I put shea butter on. I put shea butter on that motherfucker for like a like a couple days. Like and then it you know went back to normal. But it was it was it was unnerving, dude. Like I like it was another thing. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Fucking corona. It was another thing that's been um, you know, just right dick syndrome. Jesus. And it was it was, dude. It was weighing on me. It was, it was like I, like you know like it's it's hard not to be stressed when something's wrong. What, with did, it. did you weigh to see if it weighed? Less? I like that you have said it's been hard on me. <laughs> and it weighed on me. <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, at least you're being upright about the whole. Thing. Oh, uh, trying God. to be. I'm still batting a thousand. I'm still batting a thousand. Um, you know, uh, with no supplements quite yet. Um, so yeah. So anyway, I, I seem to be over that, like well past it. So uh, that's something I've been grateful for. But I, I've, I've been reluctant to talk about it because I didn't. It's like it, it was so unnerving to me that I didn't want to like curse it. Like you know, you start to say something's better and then it gets worse. So I was like, man, I don't want to talk about it. Like, so anyway, I feel like I'm in a good space. I mean, at least you didn't like fucking have like split skin like on your lip, dude. That I, dry. What, like split skin on my lip. Yeah, you have lips get so dry when you open your mouth, like the lips split. Oh yeah, or like you sneeze and and your lips like sometimes I'll sneeze, dude. My lips like split like in six different places, like <laughs> <laughs> so fucking dry. <laughs> at least it didn't happen to the fuck your dick. Yeah, well, yes, no, that's a good point. But dude, I I refrained from sex for like weeks. Wow. Yeah, like, oh, I was uncomfortable. Wow. I was uncomfortable. When was this? In March. But I mean, that because was... of this dry skin thing. Yeah. It was around the same time that COVID hit. Really? Yeah. I mean, you would think the sex would help moisturize that bitch. Yeah. Yeah. But no. No. And there's there's some other there's some other outlying factors that I might get into on Patreon. Like, cause like, you know, I was trying to figure it out. Like, what the <clears throat> hell has changed? Did you Google dry dick on fucking <laughs> No, 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 because I'm afraid to, I'm afraid of the answers. Um, <laughs> it's like you're afraid of the fucking bathroom because you don't want to find out anything is wrong. Yeah, dude, the bathroom. I tell you, I, I stand by that shit, man. The bathroom is the scariest place for an adult male. That's where you find out something's not right. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, <as> a fact. <laughs> Fax machine. <clears throat> um. So yeah. So um. Anyway. Uh. Don't. Nobody at home worry. Everything is good to go now. Um. No issues. We're we're. We're on the up and up, so to speak. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's get into Nerd Weeks then. There's a couple conversations I'm excited about today's show uh, to the listeners out there because there's a couple conversations I want to get into today. I want to get into the Transformers Red conversation, and I um I also want to get into uh, a conversation that we've kind of talked about behind the scenes a little bit, but we'll see how time permits. So with that being said, I can't remember who went first last week. Uh, let's just go the opposite way that I think it did. Chris, how was your nerd week? Uh, let's see. I uh, seven days divided by twenty four <laughs> hours. I don't know. Um, literally been busting our ass building shit. <laughs> just um, and it, the days kind of all run together. Oh, I watched all the Indiana Jones movies. Did well, you really? no, I didn't watch. Let me let me pause. I watched the first three Indiana Jones movies so far. I am going to watch the Kingdom of the Crystal Cock or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, mainly because I've only seen I've only seen it once. And what's funny is I you know I've seen these the first three Indiana Jones movies I don't know a dozen times a piece over the years, but I don't think as a as a grown ass man I've watched those movies like proper set. There. And I didn't sit there and watch them. I I put them on while I was working, but. I mean, there's a lot of movies that we've all watched like multiple times, but 
you know, you wouldn't count a lot of times if you say sit down and watch. Because a lot of times things are just on and you just fucking watch it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Like, I don't know how many times I've seen The Matrix, but, like, to sit down and watch it is probably only, like, a couple handfuls at most. I'll tell you, I um I want to watch Indiana Jones Part 4. Like, uh, again, like I only saw it once in the theater. I didn't hate it as much as the, the whole entire world seems to yeah, have. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hate it. It wasn't fucking great, but right. I didn't hate it. Um, but I want to watch it again and see if how it's aged to me. So, mm-hmm. so Chris, um, I'm very – well, let me ask you, Chris, how did you feel the first time you saw it? Kingdom – well, I, so I didn't I, – I didn't see it in the, uh, in the theater. I saw it, you know, when it came out on video. I'm, I was actually – I was working in the film industry when it came out, I remember. Still? That, that, it's been that long? Yeah. Came out? yeah, that came out a long time. It was – it's at least – I don't know. Let's look real quick. Um, we it have. Can't be that long. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. Yeah. In. I like you know time fucking flies, right? Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out twelve years ago. Wow. Yep. So I was wrapping up my time in the film industry. So the first time I saw, I mean, I had already heard that the you know the internet was a thing by then, obviously. So I'd, I already heard the backlash of, you know, this how. It, I guess it was almost campy. Like the one thing that sticks out to me is when he throws the snake to him to pull him out of the quicksand. <laughs> right. Oh god! And, and then the, the, it, the, the refrigerator, like the refrigerator scene. Oh, yeah, that was that was the crazy part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you know, then everybody at the end is like, "Oh, it's aliens, blah blah." I'm like, "Yeah," but you know, watching back these other ones, that's some crazy ass. Yes, it's all like biblically related. But it's all some batshit crazy stuff. I mean, and biblically stuff. Uh, biblically, biblical stuff is fucking crazy as shit too. Yeah, we, and I feel like with it was magical like, parts, it's not you know, it's not any fucking less crazy than the goddamn aliens. At least aliens. Oh, absolutely. Are <laughs> well, and I also feel like 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 you know, it's it's not only is it about religion, which it is, and I agree, but it's also about like his, history, right, and historical artifacts and all of that kind of shit. And like at the time that that shit came out, like I remember like the ancient alien shit was popping at the time. You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. so it kind of played into that for me when I when I watched it. Yeah, I, so you know, I I enjoyed the three. I, I, this is probably not a popular opinion. I think Temple of Doom is my least favorite of the three. Really? Yeah. And and oh oh oh, here's something I wanted to bring up. Uh, let me let me check something real quick. Make sure I get the name right. Um, who is that? Her? Okay. So I know. That she ended up getting married to Spielberg, but by the the way that that the role that Kate Capshaw plays in Temple of Doom, who well, she's Kate Capshaw, the the female lead in uh, Temple of Doom, okay. the the blonde that's the singer at the the Chinese club. Sure. Okay. Was she supposed to be the next big thing? Because she's portrayed in that movie like she has a major role in that movie. In in I mean she hasn't done a ton of stuff right yeah. yeah i mean i don't know i just thought that was i mean she was in yeah oh she was in space camp filmed in huntsville alabama i mean she yeah she just wasn't in a ton of stuff and, and didn't become like a huge actress say like you know who else from like maybe julia roberts from around that time or whoever that you know became a huge household name right like, i don't think nine out of ten people boy i'm using that a lot wouldn't know who if you say, "Hey, you who Kate Capshaw?" Yeah, is? I wouldn't, and neither did yeah. Joe. Just, I had no idea. <laughs> well, and the the only reason I I after thinking about it, I knew her name was because she's married to Steven Spielberg, and I'm that I would imagine they met on that set. Right. Yeah. Or or stayed in touch afterwards, or something of that nature. Um, I have to say, I, I think I think that. Um, the Last Crusade is my favorite of the three. Yeah, I love The Last Crusade. That's the one I'm with, with uh, we named the dog and the Ghana. Well, it's so funny because that was the one I didn't see until I was like 33. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like for whatever reason, like I, I just like I never caught it. And then by the time that like I really needed to make an effort to see it, I like wasn't in the mood. It's almost like that twenty dollar thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I hear you on that. Um, I did finish. Uh, I guess I was on my 80s vibe this week. I finished um, Back to the Future three, which I I've, ne- I've never seen the movie before. Um, like I've seen all of them, but I only really remember one. The only thing I remember about two and three is like 
parts. I'm like, I remember the hoverboard. <clears throat> yeah. Fucking yeah. DeLorean, and I remember the, the fucking train. Dude. You know what I mean? I don't remember the plot. It's so funny, man, because that's another one where I didn't see part three until I was 33. <laughs> like those, yeah, well, those, it was like, it was like that time where I was like, I was trying to, I might've even been older than 33. I might've been like 37. Like it was like, it was like that time where I was trying to make sure I saw all the movies that I had never seen before that like, I felt like I had the responsibility to see. So I saw, yeah, yeah you know, I saw, I saw, exactly. So I saw yeah. Indiana Jones three, I saw uh, back to the future three. And then I saw like the abyss, like a whole bunch of shit that I just never seen, but felt like I needed to. Like a lot of that t- stuff though, like either it doesn't hold up well or like it holds up well for its time. So like, if you never saw it to begin with it, it's not good. Right. Yeah, um, so like I said, I would never recommend Dragon Ball to anybody now. But like, if you watched that shit when it came out thirty years ago, it was great. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, you know, and, and I know Adam. Adam's a huge Indiana Jones fan. He, he hates Crystal Skull. Crystal Skull broke right. Jones for right. Him. I I know, but like, I, you know, I know he had gotten that. I remember him talking about getting that uh, Doctor Jones diary. Yeah, like, yeah, meticulously, yeah. and you know, honestly, that would be something really cool to to have after seeing the movies again, and like, oh, that'd be cool to get like, you know, the whip, and and I don't know, it was it was neat. Did you guys ever see Adventures of Young Indiana Jones? Yes, yes, yes. I saw a few episodes, but once again, I saw it because it was fucking. My dad was like, "It's under Lucasfilm. It's just Star Wars." And I was like, "This isn't Star Wars." <laughs> as a kid, you know. right? And it was I can't remember the guy's name who played him, but you know it was River Phoenix who played young Indiana Jones yeah. in yeah. the movie, and I guess he died in between those two points, is why he wasn't. Um, it was like an old guy with an eye patch, wasn't it? In 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 the show, Indiana Jones. Um, I don't. That was right. telling the stories, as far as I remember. I don't. I don't. I don't remember that much of it. I remember n- trying to watch that, and not thinking it was very good. I don't know how it is received across the board, um, the TV series, or if it's even available anywhere. Oh, you know, I was quite young, so I I remember enjoying it, but like I don't remember much of the plot either. Bobby, did Disney get the Indiana Jones movies? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, because they're on they're on Netflix now. Yeah, that's probably just. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, baby. Driving. All right, hold on one second. Hold on one second, fellas. Okay. Actually, if you guys want to talk, uh, nah, just hold on one second. Hold on one second. Right back. So, are but, we over? Are we? Are we over the Indiana Jones? Is that a thing of the past? Uh, I really stopped recording because we have been having a very good conversation. <laughs> I, I did, unfortunately. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Um, um, I, but uh, I was seeing what else I had in my nerd week. But yeah, we can roll off. I'll wrap it up. Just tell me when to go. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. But yeah, um, you know, all in all, those were those were fun watches. I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad they were staring at me on Netflix to watch because I've, I've I've been struggling to find something to watch. Um, uh, Kelly and I finished um, the the series What We Do in the Shadows, which is which is just bad shit, uh, literally. <laughs> That's a vampire pun. Sorry. Ah, guys. yes, 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 yes. If yes, it yes. if if it went over your head. See, that's another vampire pun. That I'm, I'm stacking them. The bat. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, God, well done. Oh, it's getting way over deep in here. Um, but that show is is great. It's it's easy to digest, and I always think that's important. It's very dry humor. Kelly was even. We were talking about it. She's like, I think a lot of people probably won't get that show. I'm like, I think you're right because it's just very. Uh, it's very. Specific humor, it, it's Bobby. Like you would love it because there's a lot of dick jokes. Oh, perfect! So yeah. it's on Hulu. It's an FX property. And yes, I know there's a movie. I don't know where I can watch it. I haven't done any research. <laughs> if someone wants to mail me a Blu-ray of it, I I definitely would probably be able to find a machine to play it on. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I st- I started watching Archer. Really? I oh, just now start. Okay. I've, I've never heard. seen. I might have seen two or three episodes. The main thing I know about Archer is they did some sort of crossover with Bob's Burgers one time because, because it's the actor. The same guy does the voice acting. Um, which I'll be honest, I've watched literally everything Bob's Burgers has done. I think that show is genius. I fucking love Bob's Burgers. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to take this in a different vein. So to speak, see, it's another dick joke. 
Hey, did you guys ever thought about Snickers bar as a dick vein? Um, yes, well, yes, yes, I, I have. I think of Snickers bar as um, faux poop, and it's got mm. nut in it. No, you need, you need, you need you the uh, ba- ass, and you poop it out. It looks like poop. The baby Ruth is the the one that looks like poop. Um, <laughs> which candy really bar looks nutty. more? What's wrong with your poop that is oh, that has nutty? Speaking, speaking of <laughs> speaking of nutty poop, we're pretty sure that that Kelly and Mason found bear poop in our woods. Ooh. Yeah, you were saying to me, finally. Like, yeah, so I want to put a I want to put a camera outside, like a motion detection camera or something, just to. There's always marks outside. Something roots around a lot. I mean, I know there's deer. There's you know we have we have a big old juicy groundhog fella. Foxes um, and raccoons, fo- I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, and you know we have enough. If I could get these squirrels organized, I'd, I'd take over the city council <laughs> around there. <clears throat> um. So, anyways, Archer, I don't know where we got off the, but I, it, was, it was hard to take serious this show, which isn't. It isn't serious. It's not it, there. Yeah. It's it's. But to to take this character as something other than this is, you know, me running a hamburger store essentially. Um, I just called a restaurant a hamburger store, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's how long you haven't been to a hamburger store. <laughs> yeah. We we got we ordered five guys one night. Oh man, that was a uh, cinco delivery? cinco hombres, huh? It's on delivery. Yeah. Oh. We were kind of nervous about it, but it came just fine. Like you know, I did because you never something that big and juicy. Whoa. You're just afraid it won't uh, it won't transport well. Mm-hmm. It did fine. It I was, mean, always, I always do take home anyway, so like I've never <clears> sat, <throat> sat yeah, down at yeah. five guys to eat, bro. I've sat down at the bar. Uh-huh. I've sat down at like the window bar before. That's fucking fancy and waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's like sometimes like I don't want to eat that shit. Like it, like it's more so the fries. Like the burger's good when you get home, no problem. But like the fries sometimes get soggy and shit by the time you get them home, just laying around in their own fucking grease. Do you have fries left when you get home? <laughs> yeah, man. I don't like eat out. Like, like that's the thing. I, I want to get home and I want to sit down and, and and eat. Oh man, I I cannot fucking not eat a fry while I'm driving. Well, so. yeah, no, I'm gonna have a few, <laughs> but there's a lot of fucking fries in that bag. I love being in. I loved being in Five Guys, you know, and there'd be a family in front of us that might have probably only been there once or maybe never before. They're like, yeah, let's get, uh, you know, one burger, two burger, three burger, four burger for the family. And let's get four large fries. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> you see these? You see that bag of potatoes? That's how. Yeah. No, you want two, two, maybe. Yeah. Two large fries. Dude, that baby fries is enough to drown a cat. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It was it was amazing. Um. Yeah, so I started watching Archer. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Just keep going over the rest. I'm only three or four episodes in, but that show wouldn't get made today. I'll just say that. Do I don't you, know how old it is. I mean, but they, it is. They've had news. Well, I don't, I don't know recently. Anymore. Well, I'm just talking about like <laughs> the way they talk and how much of a womanizer he is. That's, oh, so that's another it's Indiana Jones thing. He's not, a, he's, not a, he's not a hero. You, like, oh, you're he's not, not. like him. Do you like it? I like it so far. I mean, okay. I, I think I'm three or four. I've just literally just started it. Yeah, uh, I, but, I like but, the show. Would you laugh at Archer? You, you're not supposed yeah. to want to emulate him. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. But like, in, Indiana Jones is quick to grab a bitch, though, ain't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's heavy I mean, handed. We're all in the '80s. In the '80s, you just fucking grab a bitch to kiss whenever you feel like it. <laughs> it feels like he's heavy handed. Yeah. I keep hearing about that. Um, I ordered a second CNC router this week. Well, yeah, yeah, and uh, and then I asked you what it what it was, and you just ignored my question. Yeah, you just completely. Uh, I'm sorry. It, it's uh, why, 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 how, how do you do that, Chris? I have to how ask do that. What? Like just like like when you're like I'm getting ready to get a, C, a second CD, CDC router, and I'm like, is that the bigger one that you were talking about or thinking about getting? And then the next thing is like, here's a picture of a, a, a door I'm working on. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> how do you like I, I don't even understand in, in a chat like how you could how you just, you yeah you're just like yeah, man, 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 I, look, I'll, I'll answer your question when I fucking feel like it sit down read a book and be happy you know me I'm fucking working on this door right now <laughs> how does that work I, I, was I don't thinking, know I, didn't, I also didn't interject and <laughs> yeah I, well, I just, I just, I just so let it go I was like man I'll ask him on I'll ask him on Tuesday there you go Fair enough. <laughs> is it the um, bigger one? It, it is a bigger one. So it's it, I, I. This all happened in one day. Mm-hmm. I woke up one morning and said, "I gotta get a. I gotta get a second machine, a bigger machine. Something's gotta happen." So I went to Google it, and and there there's a there's this thing I can't think of the name of it. It's it's 
just you literally hang it on the wall. It's just crazy contraption on all these pulleys, and it moves the, the router around. And you can cut a 4 by 8 sheet with it. Wow. I'm like, fuck, I don't really have space to do that. And it just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. I mean, you, you mount bricks on it to give it the weight to pull it and stuff. So I got to Googling and looking around, and I found this machine. Um, I think... Their name, it sounds like CNC, but it's like S C I E N C I or something like that. NCI. Uh, it's a Can- Miami. Yeah. It's, it's a Canadian company. Yeah, CNC, look- I think, only makes music at their factory. Right. <laughs> um, but it's called Bobby. It's called a long mill. <laughs> okay. It's the it's the CNC long mill. It's it's made somewhat differently than the one I have. It doesn't have so I don't know if you guys have looked at my machine enough to know. It's got a built-in bottom piece to it. Um, the waste board is part of the functionality of the machine. Like if I took that off, the whole thing would just you know tear itself apart. Well, it, there's several companies that have made one in this style. Instead of actually having a waste board, you just strap it right down or bolt it right down to the table um, or the tabletop you're using. You just, you just grab a piece of, you know, MDF. Yeah, but, okay, I was going to say, because then you don't want to fucking end up just routing directly into your fucking table. Chris? We may have lost Chris. He's become one with the router now. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he knows he's lost because I've def- def- definitely been times where I just keep talking and I'm like, "Hello." Yeah. <laughs> Chris, are you there? Oh boy. Let me let me make sure he knows he's aware. Let me stop real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris has returned. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, it was a hard time while I was away. <laughs> so, it, it, what, I'm sorry. I unplugged my microphone cord like a dipshit. Um, let's actually wrap that around so it's kind of harder to do. I will uh, explain now what this machine is. So instead of having a, it's a framework, it just has the side rails, and you just bolt it straight to the um, the work surface, essentially. So yeah, but you, know, I, you can un- out directly into your work surface. Say, right, exactly, which means I have to build a table and figure out where I'm going to put it. But uh, it has 50% bigger workspace, so right now I can essentially do a 20 by 20 piece is the biggest I can do. This is 30 by 30. So, like the piece I'm building now, these doorways, currently it's it's four pieces of, of foam. I have to unload and load four pieces to cut four pieces. Um, just because of the size of the piece I have versus the size of the machine. This new machine, I'll be able to cut all four pieces on one piece. Nice. And it may, it, yeah. And the other thing I've, I've, you know, I've messed with the feeds and the speeds, the feed and speeds mm-hmm. of, the, of this machine over the years. I've had it, and um, I've really got it dialed in now. Where, like, I, I've cut my time basically in half. Nice. I, I sometimes feel like I'm spending more time mounting the material than I am cutting. I, there is, there's one cut I do is it takes two minutes, and it's probably that much time to swap the material. And hmm. you know, I have to tape it down. You know, I could probably, I could probably strap it down with some clamps or something. But hell, cranking four clamps and pulling four pieces of tape, probably about the same. So. Right. Uh, I can't think of anything else for the week. I'm sure, I'm sure there's something, but um, you can always interject. Oh, you know I can. <laughs> I want I wanted to talk about the resin printing with you a little bit more. That yeah. we're, that we're talking about off air. Um, this this, well, uh, yeah, we were off air, so they don't know what we're talking about. But this this um goes hand in hand with what I was talking about last week with the Games Workshop cracking down on people's 3D files. So, like, since I mentioned it last week, it has become a much bigger deal. A oh, lot, really? A lot of shit is getting pulled down. Like, a lot of shit is gone or or renamed or, like, you know, like, hidden. So, like, if you know how to find it, you find it. Or, like, if you're in the in and in, in the know in certain groups, they have it archived. Like, so, I mean, some of these groups where, like, I'm not too worried, but I've been pulling from their archive into my own personal archive just to make sure I have them because... Um, some of the, the apparently the Games Workshop is going directly to the creators. They're not going towards Thingiverse or Cult Studio. They're going to they they're looking at who's who made this file and then contacting that creator and then telling them to take it down. We know because the creators are complaining on these boards that yeah, well, I'm sorry, I'm I've been pressured to take this and this and this down, but this can stay up. I'm not sure you know what the criteria are, but so like yeah, a lot of things have gone down. Wow. 
and um, also the, these uh, in these groups, the admins have taken down some stuff by the creator's request because some of these creators are um, like in the field of you know whether three D design or whatever, and they're worried that it's gonna hurt their job if these files keep getting out. If Games Workshop holds them responsible, like the employers are oh. telling. Like, yeah, so like so like you know the, uh, being in a nice. Uh, community, like you know, we don't want that to happen. So we, they, people have been taking the files down, and people who have the files are refusing to share it with anybody, which is good, good on them. Because like some some people have been like, can can I get this file from you directly? And like we are like, no, sorry, the creator doesn't want this to be shared anymore, so we won't do it. Wow. Um, but and then Chris was saying um, that it makes sense that, or it doesn't make sense why certain things are getting pulled because a lot of this stuff are actually things that are no longer produced. So, well, some of them. Some of them are things that are no longer produced, but they're still being taken down. Right. And, and, I, and Chris was saying that maybe they should just start producing them again. And I was like, I don't know if the volume um, is, is financially makes sense. So, So the other side of that is... Why not? Why doesn't Games Workshop have a online store to buy the files? I mean, if if it's yeah. such a thing, just yeah. say, hey, we scanned in our twelve most popular models. You or, know, dude, they, what, what 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 do you do? How do you feel about a company that's like, look, we love the fan interaction, we love the fan creativity. Here is our fan made page where they get a percentage of every one mm -hmm. you buy. How do you I mean? I would fucking adore a company that backed the fandom that way. Yeah, yeah, but with Game Workshop, it's not that company. Right. No, I know. Also, they so, are trust me, I know. They're pretending 3D printing isn't a thing and isn't going to be a thing that's going that is already taking off and going to take off. They like, you know, like they are aiming towards younger and older audiences who either don't know or won't be able to figure out how to 3D print. They think I, I I think that's where they're coming from. But this shit is getting just incredibly common, and and the fact that because like even and, and and sanctioned tournaments now they're like yeah you have you can't you can't bring you know like three D printed stuff. How do they tell? Seriously, I, I, well, you used to be able to, but like you know even a couple of years back, but now you can't. There's there's mm -hmm. no fucking way. There's no fucking way you you can check every fucking army okay. that that comes in, and to make sure they're legit. Right. Because they all, especially they all paint it and the and the print is high quality and the file is high quality, but yeah. So um, Game Workshop doesn't doesn't it's not going to sell 3D files. That's for goddamn sure. Because like I I know they don't hand sculpt anymore. <laughs> um, they used to hand sculpt everything and cast it, but it's been a long time now. We know that they they use 3D 3D rendering to design the miniatures. Mm -hmm. We, they they show the 3D files. Right. Yeah. For so, sure. I mean, we, we know it's printable, but they will never sell those fu fucking files. Well, and I even understand. I even understand that. I even understand that. But what I what I what I do buck against is them. You know, like like look what uh not for nothing. Like look how they handled the GTP walls. The um like the Imperial. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, know, go, yeah. The they basically I don't know partnered with them, bought a stake. Yeah. But you know. I haven't heard anything out of that company. I haven't either. I haven't since. either. Were they at Celebration? Yes. I hadn't. Okay, that was the last time I've heard a peep out of them. <clears throat> I think so. I don't so know anyway, don't quote me on away. that. Don't quote me hey, on that. I think they well, were. I know they were supposed to be. Hey, you know what? If I'm those guys, if, if maybe they said, maybe maybe Disney said, look, we, we want to just buy your company for X amount of money. and well, you guess what? If somebody comes to me and says, hey, I want to buy your company for X amount of money, okay, I don't give a shit what you do with it. Right. Yeah. As long as I got paid. <laughs> right. you know, that's a lot of people start companies for that reason. I can't imagine that's why they started that, but... Yeah, there's a ton of, like, Star Wars stuff and DC stuff and, um, you know, like, out there for, for most franchises. It doesn't seem like, you know, that, that all of them... I mean, they might be, to be fair, they might just be bigger companies that just... You know, like it's not worth their time. Whereas Games Workshop is more of a—I mean, it's a big company for sure, but it's a more focused company. You know, I don't know. I mean, that, and also there's just too many gr amazing creators to 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 pay out. There's no way they can buy them all. Well, all well, yeah, but I'm saying like just have like a partnership, almost like YouTube. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, right, right, right. Like, look, you sign up here, you upload your thing. We have it as a fan made thing. We're not responsible for breakage or whatever. But if you want to support the fan, you know, we support the fans and you can too. Like, that they, kind of thing. They will lose so much miniature sales, I think. 
I, well, I, like, I think there would need to be some sort of parameter to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, like, but like, if you wanted to make like a piece of scenery or something, or you know what I mean, like a forty k wall, or you know, yeah, some, but that's, but that's not what we're downloading. <laughs> oh, well, but then I mean, well, then maybe maybe I'm on the side of Games Workshop then. Yeah, I think I think you might be yeah. because because you know why you know Ninth Ed hasn't come out yet, right? Ninth edition, <clears throat> correct. Uh, those miniatures are out, <laughs> like a, a pro, a, equivalents. Oh, then yeah, then yeah. I'm, like, like I'm on as games. of last week, people have looked at those those designs and have already duplicated them and made you know additional supplements to them. Yeah, like, that's that's I, a little I, bit. I'm not I'm not I'm not drawing a hard line in the sand there, but that yeah. is a little bit. That's a that's a little different. It's it's a gray area, right? Because it is the intellectual property is Games Workshop, but these people so they don't have that thing in hand. They looked at it and they made it. Right. So, and they're not selling it. They and they're giving it away for free. So, like, it's it's such a fucking gray area. Right. right. For me too, because like I understand, like, wow, man, Games Workshop spent at least a year to fucking five years developing these models. They haven't fucking sold them, and they're already out. Yeah. Then never mind. I, I withdraw my whole fan page thing. That shit would not fly because it, it's, it's direct competition. It's, it's it's because people are three D printing. Three not just three D printing. Three D design has gotten so common and relatively easy because of these programs and there are just so many talented people out there that you know it it's, it's like fan art except like the they're they're not just selling the story right? games workshop is just not selling the books even though they're fucking selling books for like fucking 80 page books for a hundred dollars <laughs> that, that's neither here or there right but their miniature sales is what drives their economy right you know like like fan art doesn't particularly hurt comic book industry unless people are drawing entire full fanfic comic books that people want well, to buy and, well, not the case. and they're and the, the 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 fan art doesn't is not duplicating the piece right right which yeah yeah you know and nor nor are is you know comic books people really just selling prints like that they do sell prints and right posts, but not you know not in that sense <clears throat> right and that to me is where it's different. And I think like, like, you know, so like some of the supplementary stuff that you're talking about or like, you know, stuff like that, I'm, I'm kind of more behind. But I mean, if it's like, look, you're making a one, one copy of this thing. But, right. But it's not right. That's that. That's the, that's the, that's the iffy part because we know like Transformers and Gundam is a fucking KO. They took the original item, remolded it, recasted it. And then it's printing and, the, you know, duplicating, mm -hmm. literally duplicating it. Mm -hmm. These are not duplications in that sense. Not in that <laughs> sense, but they are. It's not tracing, right? So it's, it's like that's what a KO is to me. It's a trace. Yeah, it's tracing. So, right. but, but what it is is looking at the cover of X-Men number one and drawing a cover of X-Men number one that's identical. Right. And that, that I do that I do I do air more on the side of Games Workshop than I do on the side of the fans. And, and, and I agree with you. Like I'm not on, on this particular topic. I'm not picking sides with, with you know with this, but like I, I don't know where to draw the line anymore. Right, right. It's interesting. But yeah, that that's that's why I want to talk about. <laughs> do, do you um uh, did you do anything this week? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did, I did, I did stuff. Let me take a look. At my notes, it's reading rainbow. Oh, dude, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about um, Darley's toothpaste, but I, I don't think this is the place to talk about oh, it. Oh yeah, uh, I don't think this is the place to talk about it. Um, I was reminded of something from my childhood that is, I guess, controversial, but fucking hilarious to me that I didn't think about till now. So this all came, and, I, and like I said, I don't want to dig too deep into this here but yeah um, but yeah. this all came from a meme that like have you seen chris the like the famous meme of like the the white hand and the black hand like doing an arm wrestling thing but it looks like they're giving a five well it's from predator, predator. Yeah. right <laughs> it's honest worse than again yeah right so this is yeah, a little just a little film called predator you, you, may, Dylan, you, may, you, have, a you may have heard of it that's the line um yeah but it says like on, like on the uh on the on the one hand, it says like um, you know people wanting social change or whatever, and on the other hand, it says uh, white supremacists. And then in the middle, it's taking uh, Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben off of foods, <laughs> right? Instead of police reform, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Um, so uh, so that's where that conversation stemmed from. And then Joe was telling me about something you know that he grew up with that was like. 
whoa, <laughs> like yikes, <laughs> like uh, that you know, not the, the, just it just it, it, honestly it illustrated to me just how not everybody is moving at the same speed in regard to uh, you know, kind of sensitivity, you know, or or compassion for people, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway. Uh, what else is on that list, Joe? Because I think we're going to leave that toothpaste alone for, the- <laughs> <laughs> for this episode. People can look it up or they can hit me up. Yeah, it's uh, hey, my 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 fellow yellows from Hong Kong. You probably rem- you will remember. Um, I'm sure Fong remembers. He he's from he's from there, I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dark season three came out. I'm three episodes in. That's pretty fucking good. Um, see. T- this is a problem I have with um, not just cliffhangers, but like seasons of things, right? Because Dark is like a quite involved plot that has takes place with like time travel and sci-fi. And like we watched season one and two like back to back, you know, within a couple of weeks. Not, not 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 binged the entire thing, but this was like months ago. And now trying to get back into it with season three, like, I'm so fucking lost. And I don't have bad memory. But, uh, like, I, I, I don't know what's the way to alle- alleviate like, something like that. I, I, so that's I, why, I, the reason why I wait to, like, for a complete se- se- uh, series to be over before I even watch the fucking series. So I struggle with that, too. Um, I struggle with that, too. But I, what I normally do, because <clears throat> my memory is really good in regard to like real life shit but it's when it comes to content i just catalog things in my head as you like this or you don't like this yeah and um <laughs> yeah it's like you're watching something new every time <laughs> yeah yeah with you know with the exception of the stuff that i've seen a million times right like i can recite nolan batman and keaton batman and star wars and you know what i mean like i i could just we, we could start right now i could just tell you the movie line for line you know but yeah. um but like so with shows if i'm so there's some shows where like I, I don't have a choice, right? Like the, the Mandalorian, I don't have a choice. I need to watch it because I can't live and know that it's out and I haven't seen it. Um, but shows like Breaking Bad, I waited until it was done. And then I watched it. Because my interest level for it wasn't super high, but I knew I wanted to see it. So that's kind of how I do it. If I, if I know I really want to see it, then I'll I'll watch it and just try to remember it. And if I'm kind of like, yeah, I want to see this, but... You know, I'm I'm in no real rush. Then I wait till it's done. That's how I approach. Yeah, and like I like, and I feel like the right thing to do would be like go back and watch at least season two. But I'm like that's so much time commitment. Mm-hmm. So like I'm either just like keep at it, you know, keep watching, and if I'm lost at certain points, I just like let that shit go, and maybe it'll come back to me, or just fucking quit watching it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's good. It's it's interesting. I, I it's not as good as I remember. Or maybe it's not as good as season one and two. Like I feel like it's moving a lot slower. Um, it's only eight eight episodes, one hour episodes though. But I I feel like so far, like the episodes I've seen could have cut, be cut by twenty five percent with how slow they are. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm still on my uh, no sleep slash. Uh, creepypasta kick so my recommendation for this week is the left right game it's fucking amazing i feel like, uh, I feel like we're playing that in real life <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um boraska um and and its sequel the boraska has a very dis- b-o-r-r-a-s-c-a it has a really f- fucked up ending that you can leave with but the the writer wrote a, a sequel to it for those that needs b- a better like a more hopeful ending I guess or like gotcha. more co- more closure gotcha. but like a lot of people are saying just just finish with the first one so those are my two if I don't know I, I know some some somebody hit me up this week and was talking talking to me about uh, Alex R was talking to me about about he's also into creepy pasta and stuff. He's been into it for a lot longer than me and have given me some recommendations. So I know I'm not speaking out to the ether. Right. So for anyone who does like this stuff and has not or wanted to get into it, I would say Left Right Game in Baraska is great to get into. Nice. And let's see. Lastly, oh, it's just, it's just a thought I had. 
a negative thought I always have at work. I, I mean, I always have some kind of negative thought at work. This time is what I write down. Customer service is what is ruining society. <laughs> <laughs> Please explain. Yeah, how so? So we all pr like when we all like good customer service and we praise good customer service, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, that's a reasonable. Like we, you know, we're mostly reasonable people, right? The uh -huh. three of these. We hope so. Some people aren't. So what good customer service is is different to different people. Sure. And what good customer service is to some people is that customer service bent over backwards to please you. And customers all basically customers always right motto is customer service at at like. At its pinnacle, right, and and I think that is what ruins people's behavior, perhaps, or thought patterns. That's kind of an entitlement conversation, right? Like that, that be, growing up with that in mind, like always, everywhere, every time you go shop or anytime you, someone's at service to you, you treat them like they owe you. Will fuck up with your personality somewhat if you just grew up your entire life like that. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if, if you can't, if you can't separate the right, business, right. yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah, of, yeah. Us, some of us do, but not. I mean, that's where the fucking Karen memes come from because Karens are these people, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to stick with the manager people. Yeah. So like, I, like growing up in Hong Kong, we we there's a no, there's a no basically no exchange, no return policy. It's like your fuck up. Like you, it's up to you to make sure everything is right before you leave the store. Like when you buy a model kit, like a Games Workshop kit, for example, at the counter, they open it up, you inspect it, and they close it back up and you take it out. No matter what happens, you don't fucking take that shit back. Same with clothes. You try it on when you're there. Once you fucking leave, you're not coming back with that shit. Like so I, I, was, I was like completely mind blown when I came to America and – my grandpa was like, "Oh yeah, you can just return them." I'm like, what do you mean return it? They just take it back. They give you your money back. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? You know? Yeah, I think you know what's funny. Like, uh, I think uh, like a lot of this stuff across the board, where, like with everything, comes down to like some like some like home training, you know, like kindness and decency and civility and you know being polite and fucking mannered and courteous and you know what I mean, like that type of shit. It kills me when I walk into a dressing room, like at a store, and I see like just clothes piled up in a corner. That somebody was like, "Yeah, these don't work. I'll just throw them here. Somebody will get it." Which is common. Yeah, very common. But uh, it's uh, it's fucking disgusting to me. Like me too. You know, like like or, or working in customer service. People that take the fucking shopping cart to their car and then put the shit in their car and then just leave the shopping cart in the middle of the fucking parking lot. Yeah, when, when they even provide fucking cart returns in the fucking parking yeah, lot. Yeah, that might be 20. All the way back. That, that might be 10, 15 feet away, but it's, yeah. just, it's too far. It's too far. You can't be bothered. You know, like shit like that, man. Like, it's just that, that, that's a home training issue, I feel like. And Partly, but like it's a cultural thing, right? I, I think it comes down to money at the end of the day because it is, it is. The owner or higher ups of a company that 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 allows these things because of money. They're like, well, like you fucking lick the customer's ass, they'll come back and give you money. If you don't lick the customer's ass, somebody else will. I yeah. mean, that's what it comes yeah. down to, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to Lowe's from now on because Home Depot gets mad when I leave my cart sitting in the middle of the fucking street. Right. So, <clears throat> yeah, not I've, I've it's not a fix, but like it's just, it's just a thought that come across my mind when I. Work on the weekends. Mm -hmm. What'd you say, Chris? I, I have a million customer service stories. That from, <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, pre Karen, but it was Karen. But you know, going back, uh, video stores and freaking, uh, uh, oh god, the auto parts is crazy. Amount of people that tried to get, I mean, get one over on you and then want to talk to somebody. I'll, I'll tell this story. You're talking about this entitlement. So this this. <laughs> always drove me nuts, you know, when cell phones became a popular thing and people come to the, try, they're talking on their phone loud and obnoxiously and then look glancing at you occasionally and saying something. Yeah. Um, and you're supposed to understand what they want. I can't. So at the, at the video, at the, the, um, part store, we, we had a 10% discount for, for military and first responders. A lot of places do, mm -hmm. but it had gotten literally out of hand. Oh, well, yeah, my, uh, my mom's boyfriend is is uh he's a veteran, dude. You don't get the discount. Sorry. So we basically had, had put an ID policy in. Right. You know, if you're in uniform or if you have ID, sure, it's ten percent. 
Yeah. This guy comes in, yakety yakety on the phone, comes up to the register. Hey, I need to get my 10% discount. He just keeps on talking on his phone. I'm like, um, do you have ID, any ID with you, sir? Like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have no ID. Kept talking on his phone. Like, man, I got to have ID to give you the discount. Oh, and he, he says some huffy things. I probably said some huffy things. He leaves. And then, of course, my district manager calls. And, and I always told my people when I worked at, at retail or as a district manager, I'm like, look, if it's hot enough of a situation where they're going to call you know, me or my boss, it's just they're going to get what they want. So just give them what they want anyway. Right. Which is bullshit. Which it, is the it, agreed. It is. Agreed. It is. But, but this guy just, I mean, he had chapped my ass. It probably wasn't. Long story short, he calls my boss. I ended up. You know, having to give him a, I gave him a fucking gift card or some shit. I don't know. Turns yep. out this motherfucker lives two doors down from me, and I didn't know that. So he got some mean mugs as he drove by every day. Yeah. For the rest of the time. But it's like, dude, what? First of all, it's ten percent off your. It was four dollars, and yeah, I get it. It was four dollars, but we have a policy, and you're on your fucking phone the whole time. Yeah. Once again, that drove me. Decency, yeah. courtesy. Like respect, you know. If he would have walked up to the counter and had a conversation with you, it could have gone totally different. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, it, I feel like there's just so much that could be fixed with just people being just fucking decent. You know what I mean? Like, and and it, it wasn't like he was on you know some important. He was bullshitting with somebody. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking to Bray. Um, I will say too, while we're on the topic of Karens. Um, that that one that we we need to be more consistent with the Karen uh uh charge. Like when we when we charge the citizen with being a Karen and I'm all for it. I'm on board. But we need to be more consistent. Because like that that one video where like the lady has the dog in the park. You familiar? Which one? I think it's a cocker, it's a cocker spaniel or something. She has the dog off a leash. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh the guy the bird watcher fell. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Look, I'm not a, like I don't her behavior. I don't condone it at all. I think trying to weaponize the police is insane. I, there's a ton of things going on with that video, right? Yep. However, we need to be honest with ourselves and admit there are two Karens in that fucking video. There's the Karen with the dog, and then there's the Karen trying to enforce the fucking dog park laws. That's two Karens. Is it though? Yes. Because if that same thing was the other way around, right? And let's take race out of it. Yeah. But there was a person in the park, and she, uh, a, a male person in the park with the dog off the leash, and that woman came around and was like, put your dog on a leash. The dog's not supposed to be on a leash out here. But, oh, look at Karen. Karen's on it. People calling in to say that like people are having parties while Corona's going on. They're like, Karen, she's a, she's, uh, she's a social distance warrior. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Like... Like yeah, I, I guess, I, I, yeah. I there's mean, two Karen. There's there's two Karens in that video. Yeah, for me, it's a. I guess it's a safety thing. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, so look, like the Corona party thing is, you know, not not a fucking good thing. Well, yeah, but see, for everybody else, here's it. Karens aren't dog no no leash is also not a good thing for the dog itself. Karens, for, Karens aren't wrong, Joe. Are you sure? Yeah, they're not. Like it's just it's just a it's just obnoxious fucking behavior that we all dislike. It's the it's it's the it's it's the person that you look to afterwards and say you know nobody likes you, right? Mm. It's it's that it's Miss Miss Mackey. You forgot to give us homework, Miss Mackey. Yep. You know mm. it's it's that shit. But she's right. You did forget to give us homework. You probably would like to give us some homework, and we'd probably be better for doing it. But nobody wants to hear that shit. So shut the fuck up. So like, where where, where does the line get drawn though? Off, you know. I'm not. I'm not saying anything about. No, no, no. I think we should just make fun of everybody. Oh yeah, that's that's fine. I'm <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That. I'm just saying that yeah, we need to make. You fun... right? To fuck you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We need to make fun of the Karen no, with the. With the... I'm down with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to make fun of the Karen with the dog off the leash. We need to make fun of the person that wants that's going to complain about somebody having a dog off a leash. Yeah, that's all. I, I want to make fun. I'm, they're both Karens to me. Nice. Um. Continue. Wait, continue, Joe. I'm sorry. Uh, I think that's it. That was and and with my statement of that. I, I, I don't think I've done anything else. Like, mm. I've been streaming a lot. I, I haven't done it as much things because like I've been in, in more and more of Krista's streams. Mm. I um I watched Tall Man. Oh how oh yeah oh yeah we have the um deal going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was good. Okay. Yeah. See? I thought it was good. I, I mean, oh. I, I don't. I, you know, I would. It's not. 
you know, I don't think it's a 10 out of 10 or anything, but it was a decent. No, 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 no. I, I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know you didn't. I know you didn't. I'm, for, I'm saying that more for the listeners. Um, but I mean, it was worth watching. It was, you know, it was well shot. It was well acted. It was a decent enough story. Like it was a good movie. And, and it's, it's deceptive, right? If you just, if you was back in the day, if you're walking by a blockbuster and you saw that cover and that name, you're like, oh, it must be a slasher film. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I know what you did yeah. last summer. Yes, 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 yes. I so agree. like, I mean, so it's there's what, more. There's more to it than that for much sure. Much more. To it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's what surprised me, and and how you know well it was shot and acted. Cause, yeah. Like, I don't remember hearing about this movie other than when it came out. Yep. So, so I feel like it's a little bit of a um, sleeper hit. Yeah. No, I, I watched it and thought it was good. I enjoyed. I enjoyed my experience. Good. Um, well, yeah. So we're what, like like uh, to one for eight on my recommendations. Well, that's not, <laughs> see, that's not entirely fair. <laughs> You know, I've thought a lot about that over the past couple of weeks uh, or months, rather. But like, um, I think it's like it's it's just levels to it. Like, so like, Tall Man is like a good movie um, in the sense of like it's worth watching and it's a it's a good story and it's told well and you know, it, period, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, and if I was into a conversation where somebody was talking about like, you know, uh. Uh, small towns, you know, something going wrong, and uh, you know that kind of conversation. I would, yeah. I would probably mention that movie and bring it up. Yeah. Now, uh, the War in Pocket that we watched. Yeah. I don't think it's good. Like me personally, like by walking away from it, I was like, I don't think that is a good thing. I, right. I, you know, I would not recommend it to anyone, and I think it's animated beautifully, and that's about it. Now. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, your name is that what it's called? Yeah. It, okay. Now, your name, I think, is good. I, I think is a good story. It's a good movie. I don't know if I, um, I don't know where I would bring that up in context. Do you know what I mean? Other than being in a circle of conversation where people are like, "Do you like anime?" And I'm like, "Well, I, I don't think I do. Uh, I like Akira." <laughs> and then I saw uh, your name, and I think that that's pretty good too. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, like, yeah. the only time I would bring it up. Um, but like that, like I don't know if hmm, I don't, and I'm, and it's not just specific to anime; it's all across the board. But like, how many movies or albums or books or whatever are good? But were worth the time and energy to watch it, or read it, or listen to it, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where I, I find myself in a in a weird predicament where it's like, you know, if um, like I value the experience of watching your name because it opened my eyes to anime being more than what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's so there's there's value to that for me. Um. But the next one that I watch that's in the same genre as your name, I'm not sure there is value to it for me. You know, right. you know what I mean. Other than two hours of a good story, but would I would you know would I have rather done anything else for that two hours? I don't know. You know, or just if you, if I was watching it with you, would I rather just sat around and talk to you about quarter scale or Karens, <laughs> you know, make fun of Karens for two hours? You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I like movies are though. I mean, like movies are for if you want to sit down and watch <clears throat> a movie and have a good story, right? Yes, it's a, it's a specific pastime. Yes, but I think there's a level of you can you can watch a good story and not enjoy it. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so that, that's kind of what I mean. Like, are like, we gonna bring up to this again? Because <laughs> no, like, I, I, God, I hate saying it, but I kind of enjoy Schindler's. You know, what I mean? like, <laughs> like, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I don't enjoy the, the the historic historic element of it, but I mean, I enjoyed watching the film, like. But like I'm trying to think of like an, another Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. You ever seen it? I've never fucking heard of it. All right, it's pretty. It's 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 spectacular. It's a spectacular film. Um, in terms of the story it tells, it's like written in the '70s. I think it's written by a very anti-American guy. Um, there's some history to it. It doesn't matter. But it's Gary Oldman stars in it. He does a oh oh you oh, wow well, gotcha. you just fucking answered everything. Well, Gary but, Oldman's in it. But maybe, but maybe I didn't, Joe. Um, nominated, nominated for Grammy. I mean, Oscars, and you know what I mean across the board. Like huge, successful film. Yes, baby. Okay, okay. Is he up there now? Okay, okay. Hold on one second. Hold on. One, actually, you guys can hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Shit. So I didn't have to sign for it. So just a fucking waste of my time. Thanks for nothing, Selena. 
kidding. Um, <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. The um, but yeah, take your Taylor Swift spy. So it was up for you know all these Oscars and everything else. It's written as it's well regarded book. There's history to it. It's blah blah blah. Gary Oldman's in it. He has a nod for best actor, I think, in it, and all this all this shit, right? And I watched it and I walked away from it like, damn, that's fucking good. Didn't enjoy it. Didn't enjoy one fucking part of it and wish uh, in a way other than being able to have this specific conversation at this moment right now have had no value to see it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, something that's good that you don't enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like th- there's there's like like I would put, you know, the you know, I, I would put I would put your name in there. The difference with your name is that your name has value to me because it opened my eyes to something. Right. So like I grew from that experience. Um. But anyway, I just think it's shit can get complicated in in terms of like what is worth our time. Yeah. Um what else did I do? I uh shit, I feel like I had a whole bunch of stuff and now I can't remember anything. Working on pipes, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to add this one little pipe so to speak. It was a um it was it was it was actually that was kind of funny because um that, that fucking like you know that's those straw sets i mean everybody uses them for pipes right but like you can get them at like the dollar store well not during covid time so i had to spend like i'm the only jerk off in the entire universe that had to spend like 13 dollars on that shit man i wish there was a guy that lived local you that probably had about 40 of those oh really man sometimes you should probably just ask the guy who hoards the diorama shit yeah but i, I feel <laughs> guilty man i hate asking fucking oh my I god do. i do you shut the fuck <laughs> up i do though i do <laughs> i'm gonna tell your wife <laughs> like, before he buys any diorama anything call me or text me send me a pigeon yeah. note or whatever yeah no i, I, I appreciate it get out of the house i appreciate it no no because I, I, I picked it up while i was at work it was, no no and then i had to get it from amazon so I went to Are they look. really thirteen dollars on Amazon? Yeah, well, I didn't get the exact same set that you got, um, or that most people get because they didn't even have that in stock at the time. I think it has come back in stock since, but gotcha. um, but yeah, and then you know, um, other than you know, and then, you know the 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 bad news that we got this week, of course. I'm trying to think if we. Oh, I watched Castaway again because uh, Jaina wanted to see it, and we just watched it. That movie's really fucking good. Yeah. Um, like it's it's for for like a movie where there's like one cast member in the whole fucking film, one man show. Yeah, yeah, but but it's really I mean if you know he he does a fucking terrific job. I mean he's a he's a national treasure. He's a national treasure, and the COVID can't even beat him. Um, and I want to say there's some other shit. Oh, you know what I did, Joe? I did some of uh, some furniture swapping, so to speak. Oh yeah, Crystal was fucking nosy. I'm like, you're becoming a nosy neighbor. I, I had to ask. <laughs> did um? Well, yeah. So, it was, so, it was like, it was, like it was bulk trash week. Oh, so like, yeah. like we we you know we were we were bringing out our fucking bird carcass filled microwave, and then Chris saw your couches. He was uh, like, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, Say that sentence. Yeah, again? yeah. You need to explain that sentence, Joe. <laughs> I told you I had birds in my microwave vent a while back. You, right? you did, but you did not tell the listeners that. So just so they don't know that there's, there's or don't think that there's human babies in your microwaves. Just what, what? What? What did I say? You said uh, my carcass filled microwaves. Oh, oh, my bird carcass. <laughs> filled sorry, sorry. Like the, there was birds in my vents, and they got deeper and deeper until they fell off like a drop off. Like there's an L shape, right? Yeah, in, mm-hmm. in the microwave vent. So it goes up and then over. So they kept getting deeper and deeper till like they fell down the downward part right behind the microwave and they couldn't fucking fly out because it's you know it's no space to fly there so they fucking just got stuck there and then carcass and fucking feather were eating each other and bits got into my microwave vent so we replaced the whole fucking thing because we were going to take the microwave out to to clean it up and then we saw it was just fucking gnarled with fucking bird pieces so it's been sitting in the garage so we anyway (laughs) we we replaced the microwave with a new one and we brought it out for bulk track and Krista was like Oh, they they rather the whole they dumping the whole couch. I'm like, yeah, yeah. They they're doing some swapping, and she's like, like how? Mm-mm. I'm like, why do you want to know first of all, second of all? And I start, I started explaining to her. You know, they brought the upstairs one out and downstairs one up, and then and she was like, which downstairs one? And I'm like, oh, Jesus. And I was starting to try to explain to her what your house looks like now, <laughs> and then I realized I never gave it too much of a second thought, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, like, cause in my head, it's it's, it's like a it's, it's, it's in text, right? Because like you said, I'm changing this te- this couch to this couch, and so in my head, I have an inventory list, but not a picture in my mind. Yeah, well, I have a new house. 
So I try to explain to you, I realize I'm, I don't know what it is, so I have to fucking send you a text to... Yeah, and I've, I've kind of gotten to the part where I was like, man, I just I don't hold off on how this shit looks so people can just see a whole new spot when they come next time, you yeah. know, in 2022. But, like, I I took out this um oh, the couch. I should tell the couch story. So I got a new couch for the basement. I moved the old couch that was in the basement up into the first floor because those couches on the first floor, my kids have just turned into silly putty, except for the love seat. So... Laura was like, "Well, let's put the love seat in the family room. I mean, uh, in the play in the, in the playroom." And I was like, "Look, I don't think it's gonna fit. I like, I don't think it fits through the door because they're big ass pieces of furniture." And she was like, "No, no, no. It, it, I think. Well, no. To be fair, I'm painting her in, in an unfair light." She said, "You don't think so?" And I was like, "No." And I was like, "But then there was like this part of me that like was like, you make your woman happy. You know what I mean? Like." <laughs> pro- provide the service for your woman that she won't, you know what I mean? Like that, I, I don't know what it is, like this man shit that like kicked in for me. So I was like, all right, well, let's do it. So we took the shit up there. I, it doesn't fit in the door. I start getting frustrated. I start getting mad. She ends up getting hurt. And I was like, just stay out of the way while I finish this. And I ended up putting two holes in my wall. Oh. So I'm, 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 which wall? Um, the wall that like is the same wall as the door to the playroom. Okay. Um, so I have to. F- I'm gonna be spackling and patching uh over Fourth of July weekend. Um, that's what's on my itinerary. Oh, not that we're having a fucking cookout anyway, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're gonna do something. Actually, we're gonna do uh, some homemade pizza. I think, uh, which we've gotten pretty good at. Anyway, and then um. It doesn't matter that, that, that it was a, it was a, and I, I look, it was one of those things where I waited to like, actually there's two interesting things. Fuck it. Let's get into it. So that night we definitely went to sleep angry with one another, my wife and I, um, I was angry that, um, uh, that I was put into this circumstance and that I, nobody listens to me I, to try to say it wasn't going to fit. You know, we measured it. We knew it wasn't going to fit. Um, you know, and she was mad because I completely lost my temper. Um, which I haven't done in a very long time. And so we went to sleep angry and I woke up the next morning and had that like, Oh man, I feel good. Like fresh new day. And then it hit like, Oh fuck last night. <laughs> that, yeah. I, I, that shit. <laughs> not what talking about. <laughs> that shit is the worst. And, um, so I just laid there still for a while. Cause I was like, man, I don't even want to get back into this shit. I just wanted to be a new day. And then like, so I rolled over on my back and then she was up and she was just like, good morning. And I was like, good morning. And we went down and got coffee and just kind of acted like it never happened. <laughs> Such a fucking married couple. Thing to do. <laughs> and, I mean, I, I, I definitely feel the vibes on that. <laughs> <laughs> and we just acted like that shit never happened. It's like a, a, around 1 p.m., um, you know, and this is like the day it's, it's, so it's the morning. So the, all this shit happened Friday night, Friday morning is when I got the bad news. Like it was just a bad day. You know, I'd been, I'd definitely been drinking, uh, for a number of reasons. And, um, and so it's, and so it's she, so like we went on a walk around 1 PM on the, the following day, still having not spoken about it. And we get about 20 minutes into the walk and I'm like, Hey, look, I'm sorry for losing my temper last night. And she was like, and I'm sorry for such and such. And, you know, and we just got past it. It was the fucking easiest over it issue that my wife and I, I think, have ever had in our in our entire uh, lives. So that was good. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. It's good stuff. Um, and then let's see what else. Oh, so, Joe, you'll be happy to know <clears throat> I have a new project on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to know. <laughs> yeah, in my mind. In my mind, you're happy to know. Um. I am going to reorganize the workroom again for the third or fourth time. Are you going are you going to get it more lit? <laughs> yeah. So so Laura is actually more interested in that than I am um because we don't do much down there anymore in regards to actual work. Yeah, cuz you bring everything upstairs now. Yeah, now we bring everything upstairs. Um <laughs> we cut everything downstairs and then we take it all upstairs and detail it and paint it and everything. So um but here's there's a number of things about it. It sounds a little bit like uh, Josh Fisher, a little bit. Um, oh, I thought you were from Virginia. <laughs> my, my apologies, I did not intend for that. No worries, no worries. But it does. It's interesting. But the um, 
so anyway, we're going to move the shit around, and I think it's going to be better in the in the long run. But here's the here's the kicker. <laughs> um, I have the graph paper still. I saved it for so I didn't have to do any measurements. Everything was ready to go to like play around with the pieces and try to find a way to do it. Like my little nice. pack ratting element, like paid off for once. Nice, yeah. Which is ironic because the pack rat element that got us into this pickle is why I need the graph paper in the first place. <laughs> so, so um, and that's pretty much been uh, my nerd week. Uh, so what's that package that you're expecting? Oh, I, I don't know. There's like five or six fucking packages sitting out there, and I, I don't even think they're all mine. Um, so I'll, I'll get into that after lunch. I think I know what one is. Anyway, um, there's, a, there's a couple things we want to talk about, but I kind of want to – I kind of want to fly through them because I want to have this Transformer Red conversation. Um, God, my fucking cord. I got to buy a new one. Hold on one second, fellas. Cord you keep looking at. <laughs> no. Um, no, this is like the – we had a – it's, it's a long story. Um, okay, so computer mistake. Uh, so when the Justice League reshoots were going down with – uh, Jose Whedon, the uh, guy who played um, Cyborg, said in a quote, um, Zach picked a good person to come in and clean up and finish up for him. Fisher simply captioned the video and recently added the comment, I'd like to take a moment to forcefully retract every bit of this statement. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. Um, That's it. Yeah, I think most people were kind of dissatisfied uh, with Jose's contribution. Um, and then there was a, uh, a, a trailer that went up for Superman's For Tomorrow. Did anybody watch that? Is that the new animated? Yeah. Is that so? Is that the start of the new animated world? I guess so. It's it's or if, I, don't, I don't even know if it's going to be connected anymore. But that's based off of the Jim Lee um, and the guy that did Hunter Bullets uh, Azzarello book. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to watch it. It's a weird book, so I'm interested to see it in um, an animated form. There's a really cool scene in there with uh, Superman and Batman, where like uh, Batman, like Superman is is in kind of in hot water with the Justice League, and like he's trying to kind of explain what himself and what's going on, and they're all like, "Look, you need to get a grip on this, or we're stepping in and going to fix it for you." And um, that all the Justice League basically walk, walks out of the room and Batman like runs off everything he's already done to prepare Superman to kind of get things in order regarding it. And Superman's like, I didn't ask you for your help. And Batman just looks over his shoulder at him and says, so? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Great moment. Okay, so then we got some pretty exciting Hasbro news in regards to Transformers. Um, and I think it's exciting regardless if you're interested in buying it or not honestly two things one they're going to do like a crossovers thing where they're going to do like an ecto one and a back to the future delorean and all that kind of stuff this i'm sorry you broke up a little bit it's it's on my end but what were we saying gone right right but i guess they have uh, they might do deluxes now too you know hold on one second fellas let me fix this shit uh, so the, the, the other thing is, uh, this red line, there's one thing I want to mention before we get into the red line. And that is, uh, that I forgot about my nerd week. So we've, we have added this new thing into our, our vernacular here. Like when anything goes right from my basement, we say, it, we say it was Mike. So like, uh, my wife got this, I don't know what it is. Like this plastic paper that you put over windows that keeps the UV light out. You guys familiar at all? Is that the thing Krista told told her to get for the the pebbles shit? Yeah, probably, probably. Um, I'm not really following you. Well, it's like you. So you have a window. You put this like plastic thing up. They come in different designs. Some look like like pebbles. Some look like bricks. Oh, like the thing that's in your kitchen that magnifies light to a point where it burns your retinas. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's, that's the one thing I have not missed. That's but the neighbors your can't see in your, but you can't see your neighbors either. Unfortunately, Bobby, right? Yeah, because you know I like <laughs> I like to know what's going on. Um, anyway, especially across the street from you. So we got ones that look like rain, like is on your window, right, from the basement. Um, 
and it keeps the UV light out, which is the the point of it. So it doesn't fade your hardwood floors or your toys, right? And um, she put the rain on this one window. I mean, she did it for me. I was at I was at work, I think, but she put it on sideways. So like, <laughs> it's raining so sideways. It's, ra- it's literally raining sideways. Hey. <clears throat> so like, I came you home. I came home and I saw it, and I was like, "Is the rain on sideways?" And she was like, "I didn't think you'd notice." So anyway, we were going down the basement the other day. It fell off of the window. It, none of the other ones we've ever done have fallen off of the window, but that shit is like laying on the floor. And I was like, "That's Mike. Mike didn't. Mike didn't like it. He's fixing it for me." Um. Okay, so this Transformers Red Line, we got images of Megatron, Optimus, and Soundwave, right? And they're all yep. going to be six inch, and they're all going to be action figures that don't transform. And right. what blew my mind, Chris, was when you said to me you were getting them, or you said something to me that, yeah, and and then that you said that this was the most excited you've been about Transformers since you got out. Yeah, I was confused. No, no, let me let me make sure you understand. It's Please. the most excited, which may not be a lot. Correct. It could be a three out of ten. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because it's something we've been talking about for I mean, how many how many uh conversations or questions have come into podcasts about what what's the one thing you want or you know, what would you think about this or, or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um I gotta take this call. This guy's called three times. Uh, Hank, okay. All right, we'll take a quick stop. All right, so Chris, talk yes. to me. Talk to me about it. Most excited we've been. Talked about the idea, the prospect of this. Um, any is? How do you feel about them? Like, what do you feel about them aesthetically? Are you in, like? I, you know, I'm interested to get one in hand just to, to right. see the uh, articulation and. and you know, uh, obviously, a limitation of Transformers has historically been articulation. Although, as the years have gone by, it's gotten much, much better. Right. Um, but you know, it, it's funny because even in the, the, I watched Hasbro Pulse did a a Transformers reveal thing, and they did a they did a GI Joe reveal thing, and they actually used the word kibble. There's no kibble, <laughs> which I thought right. I, that was funny. They've yeah. taken that word out of the the, the culture. The, the culture, yeah, to, to make it something that they're using. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes. I mean, the first three figures are, you know, very well-known characters. And, you know, we'll get a black Optimus Prime and a white Optimus Prime. <laughs> I did see, like, a skew list. I sent that to you, right? Did I send that to you? Uh, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. If you didn't, I've seen it floating around. It, it has, like, uh, Cheetor, RC... Um... Anyway, there was a number of them on there, so I, I have some. I, so I have some questions about it. First of all, like I'm excited about it because I think that Hasbro has got the action figure under control finally. Like it took them fucking thirty years, but like their Black Series, their Legends, that shit has never been better. And I think that the fact that these shit sold out so quick, or at least the Megatron, the Soundwave, is a testament to that. Um. But I am, they are a little too cartoony for me, but I'm super interested in them. And I have a lot of faith in them because of their other, other stuff that Hasbro's done recently. But let me ask you a question. Do you think that everything they produce is going to be to scale to Megatron and Optimus? Or do you think they're all going to be six inches? I think they're all going to be six inches. You know, well, there's two... I don't know. I mean, you, you look that's at that's the right answer, but I, you, you look at the Black Series line. I mean, I think they're going to try to stay around the price point. Like, uh, and, and probably it might have been you in a video. It might have been somebody else I was watching. Um, you know, in the Black Series, a Chewbacca's twenty bucks and a Yoda's twenty bucks. Right. 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 So you know, we could get you know a Jetfire. That's and of course, then then they also do deluxe figures like the um, Gamorrean Guard and exactly yeah, and yeah, that yeah. goofball from Solo. Um, <laughs> That nobody knows his name. Yeah, the one that's probably still at your local Target for yeah. thirty dollars. Yep. So, yeah, but those are those are thirty bucks. I mean, and I think that's still realistic. So that the Prime's actually still up for pre-order. Prime and Megatron are some of the bigger bots, really. Correct. And if they're scaled to six inches, that you know that's a weird move. Well, if they're going to scale everything, anything at all. Well, who knows? We might get you know, can Bumblebee six inches? And if that's the case, I'm done. Right. You know? Same. <laughs> it's just, same. That's that's not what you'd think they'd have the sense not to do that though, because this think. is obviously going at a, a collector's 
you know, point of view. Yeah. Like, am, uh, actually, I might be, my conception of it might be wrong, but like in my mind, like the car bots are was an average size bot because I mean, like the normal size bot because there's more of them than anybody else. Yes. Yes. I no. I agree with you, Joe. That like I mean, because like, there is. I mean, that's the the lux is the bread and butter, right? Right. Um, right. Exactly. Which is all the car bots. Right. But I think that like uh. You know there are a lot of bots that are that big that are are um you know what I mean the Optimus vibe that are super popular, you know, and that might be part of the reasoning for it. Like of the iconic six, almost all of them, you know. Yeah, true. So, so like that's that's my thing with it. Like I I can see it going either way. I think much like Chris, the smart move is to treat it like Black Series and. Just if it's Bumblebee and it's half the size, and it, well, sorry, it's twenty bucks. Them the rules. That's what this line is. The, 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 I'm not familiar with the black series like that, but do they come with more accessories to make it for it? The Yoda no. come with a bunch of extra shit. I mean, it comes with accessories, but nothing that I would consider extra. I mean, no, no I mean, I mean, like plastic wise, is that the same amount of plastic? I would say it's far? less, far oh, less. No, it's it's significantly less. Yeah, yeah, that's not. Well, I mean, people want it anyway, right? Yeah. But, but then again, the Star Wars, you know, Star Wars and Transformers don't have the same draw as far as I know. Yes. Like, how would you, it be? Everybody wants a Yoda regardless of you know, him being overpriced. Correct. But, but Bumblebee might be in that Yoda pocket. You know what I mean? Like, but like, you can't charge a fucking Bumblebee for 20 bucks and then charge a cliffhanger for 20 bucks if they're both small. Well, you can charge, well, a, you can charge a cliffhanger, Joe, if the story's really good. But you could charge a cliff jumper. Maybe like <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, uh, well, the Joe, that's, I, I understand what you're saying, but that's literally what we're talking about. Like the the Yoda Black Series figure is twenty dollars. The Luke Skywalker is twenty dollars. The Chewbacca, who's an inch taller, is twenty dollars. Same with Marvel Marvel Legends for the most part, with the exception of the Build a Figure, right? Yeah. Which would be another great way to make some big bots. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, it would be. It would be. Um, I think that like, you know, it's gonna get interesting. I think that you could double up some of them. Like when you get into like the Rumble Frenzy kind of pocket. Sure. Yeah. If they yeah you know, do something, I mean, you might do you might do four. I mean, I don't think they do four. It's yeah. It's a lot, but. What you, and it uh, comes on a part count on that. Stuff. Combiners could be a fucking builder figure. Yeah, dude. Combiners could be. Combiners could be. Like but you're transforming just into you know, the part. Well, they so could. how about this? How about it? How about your um, your um, your Motormaster comes with both versions. It comes with not the vehicle, but it comes with the foot or the the chest part. Yeah, and it comes with the the truck, and it, the, and it could be robot. a deluxe. Right. You know, so, I, and I think that they could do like you know whatever. I mean, how much is fucking Scorponok gonna cost, or Omega Supreme from Siege, or you know what I mean? Like they sell big shit. You know, they could sure. sell a fucking a devastator in this line. In my opinion, probably no problem for fucking seventy five to a hundred bucks. Uh, you know, I, better, better than a builder figure just to get rid of. Well, that's that's a way you can offset a cost, right? So, like, if for for example, like Cliff Jumper coming with a fucking combiner limb would you know offset of you know how expensive a tiny figure might be if it comes with something else. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. That's, so that's a good idea too. It's just making that connection. Like if you sold like, you know, Bumblebee in one leg of Superion, right? You know, that's that would be interesting. But like, dude, fucking Haslab, you could get like, fuck, you know what I mean? City bots that were to scale almost. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of potential for what they could do here. Yeah. I mean, Hasbro's been on up and up with the Transformers stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, the Transformers stuff, like, they're transforming. Transformers have been better as well, but they're still fucking... I don't think they're as good as what they're doing with Black Series or Marvel Legends. Yeah. Um, And it's, I think it's because of the limitations of the engineering, you know, the tra of the transformation engineering. Yeah, to, to keep it the price point low and have the engineering on transformation, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I mean, I, I was looking at these, uh, these G.I. Joe classified figures, um... The like I, and Chris, you have them all, right? Um, I have um all the Joes that are out so far. I don't okay. have Destro. Is Destro out? Yeah, dude. We can have a whole conversation about how awful Hasbro Pulse is. Yeah, it's out. It was on. It was on Amazon and sold out super quick. I've got it ordered through Hasbro Pulse. 
you know, the company that makes the figures, mm-hmm. and they still haven't shipped a single thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it yeah, reminds me, I need to silly. go on. The, I need to go on. So, like, I didn't. The only thing of this new stuff that I pre-ordered from them is what I had to. Although I paid the fifty dollars to be in their boner club or whatever it's called to get free shipping and uh, supposedly some other stuff, it may pay off to be in that if once the SDCC CCC CCC box sets come out or whatever, if right. whatever we get. Yeah, I um, I don't know. I think that like uh, the of those four, let me ask you this: which one do you think is the best? And which one do you think is the weakest of the of the um, the four Joes? So, um, I mean, the easy answer is Snake Eyes. Oh, but, fuck. Uh, Let's take Snake Eyes out. Let's just okay. do the three. And, 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 let, and I will be clear that I have the deluxe box at Snake Eyes. I Me don't too. have the I don't have the retail one yet, but it's out as well. I'd say Duke is. Um, I like the Buck better than the Roadblock Buck. Is not you can't do a lot with it. Yeah, I'd say Duke it, is. It, the... it is a bigger Buck. And the Scarlet is it, she's fine. Uh, just it's a it didn't. I was really expecting. Let me rephrase that. I was hoping for something better out of the buck than. I mean, it's better than like the, you know, Marvel Legends high heels <laughs> horrible buck. Right. Um. But it. it you know, I, I was expecting them to do some some cool shit with it. And it's fine. Don't get me wrong. And the 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 faces, although they're not of anybody, are freaking great on these things. Like. Scarlet's got freckles you can just barely see. Yeah. Um, face paint on. I think my I think I've got a looking left Duke. <laughs> looks to the left, which works out great when he's shooting that. Right, right. Yeah. So my Duke. So I think I agree with you. I think Duke is the best. I think Scarlet is the worst. Of the of have you the, have you gotten them? Yeah, I got all four. I didn't realize you were getting them all. <clears throat> so I, I I wasn't sure about it, but because of how good Snake Eyes is, I was like, you know what, throw the dice. But I'm not going to be in on all the others because I don't like that Storm Shadow. Um, but I did hear that they're all going to be based around missions. So this is like, you know, Arctic mission Storm Shadow. But sure, you know. perfect. That's and what Shadow was about. Exactly. And that and that color scheme did come out. Yes, uh, yes. At some point in time later Correct. in the line. Correct. I mean, I've, I've I'm getting them. I'm getting them all. I mean, I, I just I'm really happy with with what they're doing. Are you getting pimped out, Destro? I already got it pre ordered. Nice. Yeah. See, I'm not getting that yeah. either. I'm, I'm I'm getting Destro. <laughs> I'm gonna get uh, Cobra Commander. You know, like I'm, I'm gonna get most of them. Um. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, th- like when I was looking at them, I was like, man, I think Scarlet is is not great. But, and I I agree with you that I think the face sculpt is great, but I don't think it it's great for Scarlet necessarily. But I say all that to say this: there's fucking three paint apps on the knee joint. Yeah, there's a ton of paint on those figures. Like there is a lot of love in those things, and there's a lot of love in their Black Series, and there is a good amount of love in their Legends. I just don't see the same in their regular Transformers line, but that's what I'm hoping is going to be fixed with this red line. Yeah, I can see that with it being just straight-up action figures. Yeah. And, like, the the joints, like, you know, because of the the dynamics of the the physics of the characters, like, the joints look like they're going to be on, like, proper hinges and stuff. Like, it looks like it's not going to be shitty. Which is great to say. Like for yeah. Um, I just think yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm looking like at the Megatron right now, which from what I'm reading, it may not have ever been available on Walmart.com. Hmm. Um, but it's funny because two of the pictures are renders, and then there's actual three photos of something they've cobbled together. But, you know, there's a lot of paint on these, it looks like, which hmm. there's not a ton on Megatron. It's, you know, red on the eyes, purple on the... On the insignia and then the little buttons on his chest and red on the side, but it's just it's just hope that translates to being painted well. Correct. Once it comes to light. Correct. But yeah, I think it's um, I think it's, I I would have never guessed this in a million years. I would have guessed the GI Joe line last year. I would have guessed the GI Joe line. This this shit, I would I never saw it coming. Especially of how fucking guarded they are of people ma- like third party companies making trans you know if officially licensed third party companies making transforming things they don't allow it you know right um it just seems well, you, you know, know I want to bring everything in house maybe you know like it, not even fucking right third party well, do obviously they get paid 
you know, whatever, when 3A or, or one of the other official companies makes, you know, like those those Bumblebee movie non-transforming figures, which look great. Maybe they've seen the success they're having there and like, well, shit, people are buying non-transforming Transformer characters. Let's give it a stab and yeah. see what happens. I think so. Maybe like yeah, maybe they just haven't known what Transformer fans want for 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 a long time now. Well, dude, I, just figuring I, it out. I'm not sure. I would have thought that Transformer fans wanted this. You know, I know. Well, I would. I don't know it. that they do, Bobby. What was the feedback to your video on Saturday? It, it, it was surprise. It wasn't all positive, yeah. but it was surprisingly positive. Like overall. You know, and I would have never, I would have never guessed that from all the other conversations I've had on Sit Down Saturday about non-transforming Transformers. Mm -hmm. I would have never thought in a million years that I would have this conversation. I was ready to go to war all week, but I didn't really have to. Like That's people, good. yeah, and but you know, I, like I hate to say it, man, but it might just be a fucking fact. Maybe people don't respond the same way to non-transforming Transformers when it's four hundred dollars versus when it's twenty. That's very yeah. possible. Maybe people's morals and codes and values have a lot more to do with the price tag than they do with the actual product. That depends, I guess, on the person. Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking. Some people, if you're Transformer fans, you just want Transformer shit as long as you can afford it, right? So, like, this is a Transformers product. That's what I'm speaking in generalities. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, when, uh, I have, when I have the Flames Toys conversation, everybody's at fucking at my throat. But when I have this conversation, everybody's like, you know what? Maybe, maybe, I, maybe it's worth a shot. And listen, I'll tell you right now, that all comes down to price. It all comes down to price. It, 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 if if people can't afford, it's some, something seems unobtainable to people. I think they're more likely to shit on it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 One thousand percent. That's 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 exactly what I'm saying. It's easier to kind of have that confirmation bias when you quote unquote can't afford it. Yeah. You know, sense. it's like yeah, it's like a self defense mechanism too. Yeah, like, like you start to to sell yourself stories in order to make it something you don't want or don't think is cool. You know, and I, it's a sh it's just a shitty way of fucking viewing the world sometimes. Like I um, I'm trying to think about like oh your berserker statue, uh Joe. Uh huh. I don't I I don't have any interest in it. I don't want it. I I could afford it, but I would really rather not spend my money on that. Yeah, and I can simultaneously look at it and be like, you know what, Joe, that's fucking cool. Maybe maybe part of it is because you have no subconscious desire for it. Well, but see that that is my point. I don't need to sell myself a story. Do you know yeah, what I mean? You don't want it anyway, right? So you can be objective about it, right? Right. I don't know. Um, we're gonna do. Are we shitting on poor people again? It's fine. <sighs> no, look, and it's not like like. I know it's. I know it sounds that way, man, and I don't I want it to. But like, I know I. <laughs> but there is like 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 there is okay. So like, uh, I can't. Well, I can. I can, and I think that everybody should have this viewpoint that you can afford whatever you want. You just have to be willing to sacrifice whatever you want for it. Yep, that, that's the thing. Nothing is truly unobtainable as long as you're willing to make the, the, the sacrifices and decisions to get you there. Correct. Yeah, that's how bad Finan you Financially, let me back that up. Financially, Correct. nothing is unobtainable. I mean, you even take it to the extreme, it's still true. Like, people will rob banks for shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, just relax for a second. The, um, the, 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 but, I'm just but, saying, but, right? People rob banks for shit. But let's take, let's take uh, the, 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 there's one 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 scale thing that I want. Right, I want a one-one scale Han and Carbonite. Have no idea where I'd put it, but I want one. I can look at that and be like, I want that. I can't comfortably afford it, but I could make sacrifices and store money away and save and get it if I wanted it bad enough. Obviously, I don't want it bad enough to make those sacrifices, but I can still look at it and be like, man, it's fucking beautiful, and I tip my hat to whoever could just swing it because they always wanted it. I've got him right here in the basement, dude. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know. So Close I, enough. I want I want a Hansel and Carbonite that you can't roll up and put in the closet. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> but six, it, beer, six beers in, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but but you know what I mean. It's, it, so there's another side to that too. That's like a dangerous conversation that I don't think people necessarily want to have. There's shit. There's bullshit in every fucking community, right? Every fucking community, regardless of what it's about, has some bullshit associated with it. 
Oh, sure. But like, I feel like I see less bullshit in the communities where stuff centers around two hundred dollars than when I see shit in communities that centers around fourteen dollars. And I think the reason why the third party stuff sometimes gets wrapped up in the middle of that is because they there's kind of like demographic confusion as to who it's for. The fourteen dollar person feels like this should be for me too, and the hundred dollar to two hundred dollar person thinks that this is for me. So those two groups of people end up having conversations about the same piece, and as a result, you get fucking factions at war with one another. Mm. Bobby, you can get that. Um, you can get that piece now from Sideshow. They they have. Not only payment plans, but now they have a, a basically a credit card you can use. <laughs> oh, it's only two two hundred fifty dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, for for, yeah. for the next five years. Yeah. Well. <laughs> How much yeah, is it? How much is it? Seventy five hundred plus God. plus tax. So it's basically eight eight grand. And then you, I, know, if you was fucked up about Sasha. They're going to charge me shipping. Actually, it's free shipping. I actually went is it really? my cart just to see. Yeah. Oh, I can use my forty four dollars in <laughs> points points today. <laughs> Hot damn. Let me take this out of my cart before something. Fucked up. <laughs> even even paying the thirty percent cancellation fee would hurt like a motherfucker. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we'll we'll do uh questions next week because um my I'm having some technical difficulties with the wire here and I need to replace it. Um. Yeah, we once again we, I want to close and say that if you want to donate money to New York Mike's family, uh, hit me up anyway, and I will get you the PayPal information. I'm just hesitant to put her PayPal out there publicly. Um, and then if you want to physically help, uh, hit me up privately, and I will add you to a a list of people that we will be coordinating with. And I also want to say rest in peace to New York Mike. You know gone but not forgotten and uh far too soon and i love you and miss you and somebody is going to need to pick up pretzels and donuts um <laughs> and amish that's butter right. on the way down the next golf fest and uh in his honor and that's going to kind of I, I don't care if i gotta ship it here now i i'm not going to have a skull fest without those three things you know for him yes sir um with that, I want to shout out the rest of the cool table, Shattercast Uncut, Into the Realm, uh, Stasis Lock, uh, uh, Building Up to It, Fresh Communications, Verbally Challenged, and Breaking the Mold, as well as Toy Detox. And I want to shout out to everybody that helps out with Nerd Rage, whether it be Marilyn Phil with our notes on Twitter, Dante the Destroyer on Facebook, Raul on Instagram, Manny Behind the Scenes, Andrew and Andy helping me with the Force stuff, as well as Esteban, who helps with the IG of Force Sensitive. And did I do it, Joe? Did I get everybody? Uh, I think so. All right. And with that, Flappy Labius. Tasty Tank. Tight Dick Player. <laughs>